My brother Mean Gene was down with Grandmaster Flash. They pretty much started together. All the equipment that they owned was in my mother's house. So I would just see them every day, just DJing and stuff like that, doing parties, help them carry the equipment, you know, go downtown and, and you know, purchase records for them and stuff like that. Hip hop came from nothing. It was just a way for us to express ourselves. We wasn't worried about what it was going to become. We was just trying to, you know, celebrate, you know, what we can do for, for that culture and, and, and express ourselves. Yeah. So that was a way for us to express ourselves. You can express yourself either through graffiti or, or emceeing or DJing and stuff like that. I was making a cassette tape for my, um, for my school. And I was in the house doing the music and the music was like really, really loud in the house. So my mom's came and she bust in the room and she was like, you know, hey, turn the music down or turn the music off. So when she, when I was in the, when she was in the room talking to me, I was still holding the record, rubbing it back and forth and forth and back with both turntables playing at the same time. I didn't have no earphones on. I was pretty much had the record playing, rubbing it back and forth and forth and back at the same time, doing my scratches. And when she left, I rewinded the tape back and, and heard myself doing it and just capitalized off it. My brother Mean Gene couldn't find Flash for about two, three weeks. Nobody heard from him. I mean, we pretty much thought he was dead calling around, trying to find out where he's at. Anybody seen him, nobody seen him for like two or three weeks. And my brother Mean Gene wanted to do a block party. So my brother Mean Gene said, F this, I'm going to do the block party. So we went out and we did the block party anyway. And he, and he let me jump on the turntables and everybody got to see what I can really do. We have this park on Boston Road between 168 and 169 called 63 Park. That's where everybody do the block parties at. And um, we came out to do a block party. Um, excuse me, the L Brothers, and that's when I first displayed the scratch, and everybody was like, I mean, what is this guy doing, you know? I mean, you, you, hear, you hear a record that you hear all the time, but the only difference is you hear certain parts of the record being played five, six, seven, eight, nine times, and, and just one, it's just one click of the wrist. And everybody in the party was like, wow, you know, that's something new, you know? And, you know, I started putting on all the mixtapes and stuff like that, and people started hearing it and stuff like that, and, it just became became the scratch. Do you remember when you first heard another DJ doing scratching? Yeah, which was Flash. Okay. Which was Flash. Flash um, got to the point where you know Flash was extending the breaks and doing the back spins, and and he started scratching. You know, because basically me and Flash was the only DJs that had the advanced skills like that. There was nobody else out there that was doing what me and Flash was doing. We was like three, four steps ahead of all the DJs. Yeah. When Flash was mixing two records together, DJs was trying to, actually trying to do that. Everybody was playing like Hurt Play or like Bambada. Bambada pretty much, he wasn't a DJ that, um, that mixed and scratched. He just, just basically just played a record. Cool Herc was the same way. This is wow. I mean, I remember we did a party at, um, at one of Cool Herc's clubs. And um, Cool Herc wasn't there. His equipment was all the way in the back and stuff like that. Was that the Hevalo or? Yeah, it was like, it was like the Hevalo, yeah. And um, some guys came in and just stuck the whole party up. They just stuck up everybody in the party, man. It was just crazy. And I will never forget that day, man. It was just crazy. The party was packed. Everybody was having a good time. There was a lot of girls there. There was no fights, no nothing. Until these guys came in with guns and just started just, just snatching everybody's chain and grabbing. I mean, were they, they have masks on or anything? Or they just, uh, no, they didn't have no masks on. They just came know, in. Nobody knew who they were. No, they nobody knew. knew who they were. No, there three, three. It was three guys, and um, two of the guys got away, and one guy actually got shot by security, and he, and he fell on the steps, and he just stayed right there. Everybody was just running out the party, just <laughs> stepping so across him. Broke out. Yeah, yeah, gunfight broke out. Yeah, because I think what happened was once they, once they stuck the party up, and then they left. One of the security guys grabbed his gun from the back and shot him in the back as he was leaving. Right. So it was just like, ugh, it was just crazy. And the other two guys never got caught? They just no, they never got caught. They were just, whoosh, they were just right. gone. Did they, they try and check you down during that? Well, what happened was when they first ran in, I ducked behind the turntables. So they couldn't really see where I went, you know. And back then, it was the, the times where everybody used to wear the, um, the silver chains and stuff like that. So I had, I had a bunch of silver chains on, so... I guess they must have came in looking for me and stuff like that. I don't know. 
They probably said, they probably came inside the party and then left and then came back in and said, yeah, we're going to get the DJ with all those, all those silver chains around his neck, <laughs> you know? So it was just really crazy, man. And there was a lot of people there from my, from my high school. And then the, the next week when I went to school, people were like, oh, my sister got a, got a coat took in and this person got that took in. I was like, I felt really bad, man. I felt really bad, you know? But and it doesn't really have no soul. Hip hop, hip hop doesn't have no soul no more, you know, and it's gotten to the point where um, you have these record companies that's trying to dictate to us what hip hop is when we ones that created it, you know. I mean, you, you take an eighteen year old kid and want to and want to, he want to talk about how many people he killed and how many drugs he's selling on the street and how many girls he went to bed with. That's what they want to put out, you know, instead of putting out music to make people feel good. You know, they don't do that no more. Why they, is that? Because I feel that um, they don't want anybody to learn anything. It's gotten to the point where, you know, when Public Enemy came out and stuff like that, and they let Public Enemy roll for a little while, and they just tried to get rid of them. And then you had the feel-good music like Dougie Fresh, Slick Rick. Um, um, we call it the golden area of hip-hop. Like Roxanne Shante and, and, and Big Daddy Kane and, and EPMD and... And, um, and people like that, that was feel good music. But now it's gotten to the point where all everybody talk about is how many diamonds they got and how many girls they done did this with and how many cars they got and I got this and you ain't got that. That's why a lot of the rappers can't even go back to their own neighborhood because they are making people feel like they better than these people now. When you came from, my, you came from the same block I came from. So how you gonna be talking down to me? So it's, it's just crazy, you know? Play, play Lil Wayne on the radio, but also play Slick Rick and Dougie Fresh. You know, play everybody so it could be a nice, everything could be rounded off, you know? And it's gotten to the point where, you know, people don't like hip hop because of what they hear today. But they got to hear some of the, the newest, the, the older stuff that we used to play back in those days, where it's just clap your hands and stomp your feet and, and feel good music. There's no more feel good music no more, I mean, you know? It's crazy. Well, I think that the um, the first the first generation of hip hop, you know, I think that we are not getting our proper respect, our proper due, you know, because I think the first generation of hip hop um, took hip hop to a, another level, you know. We elevated everything: the MCs, the DJ, you know, the beatboxing, you know, female MCs. And we have took it to a level that no one else thought it can be, that can be reached, you know? And I think that the, um, the first generation is not getting a true, true due respect. Yeah, what's up, what's up? This is the original Scratch creator, Grand Wizard Theodore. I want you, you, and you to call who you can call and come celebrate, help me celebrate the Cannabis Cup on Thanksgiving. It's gonna be a lot of people there. It's gonna be a lot of pioneers there, you know? So definitely come out. This is like a, a, a lifetime event. I am looking so forward to this. And you should definitely come out too because it's gonna to be all that in a bag of weed. Peace.